Welcome to episode 22, season 2 of Chris Cast, starring Chris Abraham. That's me. This episode is going to be me asking a lot of questions. Um, just a noodle about the concept of American culture, what is cultured America, and whether or not that is white culture. And whether or not that is white supremacist culture. And whether or not that's white supremacy. So that is going to be the light little episode that I'm going to do right after this message. Welcome back to Season 2, Episode 22 of Chris Cast. There's been a lot of light episodes lately, but I was, I've was i been listening to a lot of general podcasts, including Latino USA and, and All Things Considered and on the media and a million uh, podcasts that are just, I randomly subscribe to on both Apple Podcasts and uh, via a podcasting app called Podcast Addict. And so they're all mixed together, plus YouTube and what I'm just, and and growing up in Hawaii, which I I would say Hawaii, but that's too, I'll I'll differentiate the eyes, but I'm in the mid-Atlantic. I can't say Hawaii, but Hawaii, um, growing up Howley, uh, what that means being, you know, minority white, but also, if you will, um, having entitlement because you're white in Hawaii and all that stuff. And then I heard a podcast today, and I don't even know which one it was. And uh, it was really interesting because it came up that someone was being interviewed and she was African-American uh, American descendant of slavery. And, um, she was saying how, and this might have even been on MoFax. It, it might have been earlier than that, but it was made apparent that, okay, quick aside, cause I'm really shy about this conversation, but as a quick aside, I grew up Uh, in New York City until I was six, and the message I got as a young child and as a child New Yorker is that America's the melting pot, right? Melting pot. And in my little brain, when I was a little kid, melting pot meant that everybody moved here and then learned uh, proper English, proper education, proper civics, and I didn't think twice as to where that cultural norm came from, right? Where you enunciated your language, where you complied with a grammar book, where uh, you spoke English and uh, aspired to A's in school and then aspired to A's in college and then optionally went to grad school and got your PhD. Uh, the first time I ever experienced the concept that it wasn't cool to get good grades, and even worse, it wasn't cool to be Howley. Howley being white was at St. Louis School, Catholic School, where uh, Asians who spoke proper English, proper American, I'll say, 
and who aspired to getting A's uh, in high school were called uh, bananas. And uh, kids that uh, were local uh, Hawaiian were called coconuts, brown on the outside, white on the inside. Locals were bananas, yellow on the outside, white on the inside. And then there were Oreos, black on the outside and white on the inside. There weren't that many Oreos in Hawaii. In Hawaii, they're called popolo, which is a berry that is so, so, so black, it's purple. And that's what the Hawaiian word for black people were. Let's not go into that. And I understand uh, by having by having spent the last 32 years in the D.C. area that there's a lot of concepts of uh, of cultural differentiation of uh, wanting not to speak like your oppressor, not wanting to speak like white people um and i really grew up uh attempting i mean i was always looking white i was always howling in hawaii but i desperately tried to do what i later was referred to as code switching which is to say my mom told me and my dad told me both new yorkers from new jersey growing up in hawaii that I was not allowed to use pidgin English in the house. Uh, so we were a dual language household. I spoke uh, proper grammatically correct Howley in the house and in school and around um, official people. Uh, and, you know, like in businesses and so forth. But I would speak Pidgin English to anybody else uh, and everybody else who spoke Pidgin English to me. Um, it sounds a little bit like this. Hey, bro, what? You think you bad? What? You like go school? No, bro. I like go beach. What? You go beach? Oh, no. You going go beach? Nah, no like. What you think? Yeah? That's sort of it. It's really forced uh, for performance. I'm not a dancing monkey. I'm not a performing monkey. Anyway, um, quick aside, when I moved to Berlin in 2008, 2007, and then 2010, uh, and applied to get my residency in 2007, 2008, uh, on the goal of, you know, being a, becoming a German citizen, uh, Angela Merkel, who's everybody's favorite, has a requirement uh, at the time. I don't know what it's like now. But at the time, uh, it's mandatory in order to get residency that one learn to speak and speak German and one comply with cultural norms in Germany. In other words, uh, there, and this is mostly because there's a little bit of uh, of cultural clash happening with with Turks and Muslims in Berlin, at least, and most in a lot of Germany, where there's a belief that Muslim women are oppressed and repressed and disallowed uh, to disallowed to integrate into a greater culture, and in fact are kept if you will, inside and within Muslim um, families or are isolated within Muslim families. Whether or not this is true, every resident that moves to Berlin and gets residency must attend a real life, I don't know what it's like now with COVID, but must attend a real class at a, at a uh, language in civics course that happens, you know, a number of uh, classrooms around the country. Now, my assumption in America is that Americans learn to be American. 
and by that it means talking howly, behaving howly, um, and by howly, um, I mean American, which is to say, even though we live in a culture that does not have a uh, official language, and it's not English, um, the assumption is is that the melting pot melts all people towards a monoculture. Um, and that monoculture is not an African-American monoculture or a Latinx monoculture or a Hmong monoculture or a Vietnamese monoculture. Um, I'm not even saying it's a European monoculture. It is uh, a monoculture that has emerged over time, over the last uh, two. Hey, Google, how old is America? 243 years old. On the website worldpopulationreview.com, they say, the United States of America was founded in 1776, making the country 243 years old as of 2019. So, 243 years old. Very interesting. And plus, uh, hey Google, how long has America, when did America become a colony of England? On the website americaslibrary.gov, they say, by 1650, however, England had established a dominant hey, Google, on the Atlantic. How many years ago is 1650? 135,024 days. <laughs> hey, Google, how many years ago is 1650? 135,024 days. Oh, so funny. Anyway, um, and I guess 400 years, right? Uh, that's the number that one uses uh, when one talks about enslaved people in America. Um, now, public schools and and being, I, I mean, uh, so what I've learned through the voices that I've been hearing through Black Lives Matter is that there, in addition to a lot of other things, there is a patent result, sorry, a patent rejection, if I understand it, a, a, a patent, patent, patently, they patently reject. Hey, Google, what does patently mean? Here's the definition of patent. Clearly without doubt. Clearly without doubt. Thank you. They patently reject the uh, tools of the master. So as a result, the master's culture is rejected. The master's language is rejected. The master's civics are rejected. The master's history is rejected. And what the desire is, is a deconstruction and a balkanization of America into any number of subcultures with the ultimate goal of not only uh, defunding the police, but um, dis dis disassembling the, the white supremacy as defined by the English-influenced original colonies that then became a dominant white su white supremacy culture, a white culture, white male culture, dominating America and oppressing all the other faces, uh, gender, genders. Um, and, and is that right? Do I, do I understand that properly? Has it... Is, is the ultimate goal to 
completely take back language, culture, value, moral, everything else away from the, what I call American norms and values and bring them back to a for me, a, a, a um, originalist concept based on uh, Latinx, Latino USA, all immigrants and all people of color and all non-white people can and should uh, be of their own tribe, have their own tribal languages, be of their own tribal, um, have their own, if you will, uh, tribal laws. And, and I don't mean tribal to mean primitive. Uh, please forgive me if you think that. I'm thinking about the balkanization of Afghanistan and Iraq. And I'm thinking about after uh, Saddam Hussein uh, was killed, then um, Iraq became a series of, of tribes. And it's always been a series of tribes, but the heavy hand of... Saddam Hussein or, you know, Kamehameha or whomever, uh, the U.S. presidency, I'm not talking about Trump, but just in general, the, uh, at first, right, the norms were defined by the King of England, and then after the revolution, they were defined by uh, the founding fathers. Now, that is the DNA of what the um, resulting evolution of culture has become through years of good education, through years of terrible education, through uh, growth of the middle class, through the death of the middle class, through uh, oligarchy and plutocracy, 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 (laughs) oligarchy, oligarchism, plutocracism, um, and the dominant Judeo-Christian, and by that I mean Christian, and the uh, various and sundry uh, ways and means of, of law, and what is legal and illegal, and what you can and can't do with your time as defined by lawmakers who are white and male and by legislators who have been mostly white and male. And that is something to be, as far as I know, by the current radicalization. And that's a word that's being used by people uh, on the, on, uh, in the Black Life Matters black BLM world, the concept of self-radicalizing isn't only something uh, dismissive to describe someone who is going to put on a bomb vest uh, by being radicalized into, into, uh, into ISIS. It's actually something that people say about themselves in the, uh, in the, uh, the quote unquote woke world of the, uh, of the black lives matter uh, left, left. Um, is that what I, is that what I perceive to be true? Is that, is that along the lines that, um, I mean, I studied in college, I studied deconstructionism, Derrida, Jacques Derrida, and, and the whole concept of, um, uh, the master's, uh, tools do not, cannot, cannot, uh, bring down the master's house. And I loved all that stuff, uh, and it's interesting to see it come to life as as powerful political tools. However, what's going to be built after that, right? Um, is what if that culture rejects everything that quote white America or um, American uh, concepts of 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 uh, success, uh, quote American traditional concepts of of um, of of high performance, of of 
wealth. Uh, if all these things are rejected as being antithetical and being uh, the pursuit of white men, capitalist, um, what's what is the you know if the goal is not to get into Harvard, Princeton, uh, Yale, Duke, Stanford, um, Columbia, NYU. Uh, Berkeley, if, if those aren't the goals anymore by people of color, then what, uh, then the, then the, the, the analytics that define what is, what one, what one, what one's goals are to do and what one's goals are to be and the American dream will completely need to be redefined because if you don't speak proper English, you won't get a proper job. And if you don't um, dress a certain way, you won't get a certain job. Potentially, COVID has uh, been amazing for that, right? You don't have to necessarily speak proper English. Uh, you don't, you can just read and write it. You don't have to, you can make, you can let your hair be any way you want. You can, you can smell any way you want. You can, you can, you can engage in whatever kind of, uh, of, of localized behaviors one wants to do. And all you need to do is, you know, is, uh, is offer value online and your life can be completely awesome so i think i think it's a really good time uh to live that life but i really don't understand i mean i really think it's important to be able to be bilingual and bicultural and and whenever I go to any culture anywhere, I adapt my culture. Uh, I'm a real chameleon that way. I will behave one way in Paris, a different way in Lyon. I'll behave a completely different way in Kathmandu and Berlin and in California and in New York City and in D.C. and in Arlington. I'll behave differently in Utrecht, Netherlands. I will, I mean, every place I go, I will change my language. I will change my, my signs of respect. I will adapt my cultural norms and behavior. And, um, and I don't know, I'm really afraid about how America is going to respond to this. Uh, America as a whole, which is still 73% um, oppressive uh, 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 white supremacists, you know, if if I'm going to be using the, the language of, of the culture, right? I mean, 73%, right? That's, that's, that's uh, very close to three quarters. And, um, And if you don't adapt, and if you keep on further and further rejecting uh, the dominant culture, then you are in fact painting yourself into a corner. Um, I was just watching uh, on Netflix, I think, I was watching um, Chef's Table, and it was about barbecue, and there was a Mayan woman who uh, has been maintaining the Mayan culture by doing pit barbecue um, proves to me that Mayans uh, travel to Hawaii and that Pacific Islanders are in fact Mayans because um, uh, emu, emu, ipu, emu. Anyway, um, and she only wanted to speak Mayan and only wanted Mayan culture and everything else like that. And her dad insisted, please, little girl, learn Spanish because you'll never, ever be able to have an opportunity to have like the superpowers of being able to do 
anything outside of those things you're most familiar with. And even those things that you only want to do. It's like my high school girlfriend um, being an amazing actress and her mom making her go to um, uh, cosmetology class and learning how to cut hair just, just to have an extra superpower like, um, I mean, I'm a, a dive master and I'm pretty good with French and a little bit less good with Spanish and uh, a little bit less good than that with German. But I keep trying to grow and grow and grow my culture and understand other people's culture. And I, I really think it's important. Um, but I agree. I mean, I agree. I don't think there's any reason my, uh, the woman I love to speak Spanish with, uh, works in the convenience store downstairs here in Dominion Towers, and she doesn't speak really any English at all, and she's a joy. I mean, we, we chat and flirt and play and talk, and she tells me about El Señor and how important El Señor is to her, and she's very religious, but not I don't think Catolica, I think she has an evangelical belief in God. And, and we spend enough time together that I have conversations with her. And I think my Spanish might not completely suck. It's like my pigeon. I'm terrible with pigeon when I'm, when I'm cornered with it. Um, so that's all I want to know. I do, I do know that I want, I want to know, I do know that Black Lives Matter wants to decrease or end police on black violence. Yes. And I should hope that they want to get black men and black women out of incarceration and to release black men and black women from incarceration for things that are now are now culturally acceptable, such as marijuana possession and things like that. I, I agree that, that um, drug laws should not be targeted against people of color and in support of not putting white kids into jail, you know, cocaine versus crack, that whole thing. I believe that uh, African-American culture Immigrant culture uh, should be supported and loved. I mean, I wish I knew more Hungarian. I wish I, I wish I had, I wish my mom had gotten her Irish citizenship and passport uh, so she could have passed it on to me before she passed away. I loved growing up in a, in a, in a family that held very closely to its Irish roots, my mom's side and to my um, uh, Hungarian and uh, Czechoslovakian roots. You don't hear that word anymore. Um, on my dad's side. And I don't think anybody should kept be kept away from that. But I do believe that if you, if you can't speak proper English, and I'm an English major, so, uh, but if you can't speak proper English, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. And if you're doing it out of spite, um, as opposed to um, your education being not being held from you because of poor uh, poor funding of public schools and of uh, uh, poor funding and payment of, of, of school teachers and so forth. But if you're willfully avoiding learning um, the language of the dominant culture that you happen to live in out of a, a, a out of defiance then God bless you. I mean, defiance and, uh, and, and, uh, that kind of defiance is, is so important in the world, yet it's going to basically put, uh, an iron stone around your neck. Um, and it's going to drag you to, uh, the bottom of, uh, of your earning potential. You've got to fool, you got to fool people into hiring you. You've got to, um, you've got to reflect 
them to them. I mean, even as a big white guy who used to be handsome and, and uh, used to be um, uh, attractive, I even I knew that I had to emulate. I had to, was the, the awful saying, dress for the job you want or dress for the dress for the two, dress for two jobs that you dress for the job that you want um, or dress for the job that you will want or whatever you also have to you also have to um, have the fluency to represent your employer in a positive light I was listening to John C. Dvorak go on and on from from the podcast No Agenda Show. I've been listening to him go on and on and on about how Californians in Northern California Bay Area are trying to pass laws that say you need to hire me even if I have face tattoos and neck tattoos and crazy piercings and and uh big stretched out gauged ears lobes and so forth and and to be honest um uh, it's gonna be perfect it'll be perfect now that we don't uh see each other face to face but to be honest um not only are you fighting against the most beautiful uh attractive charming well-spoken helicopter mom and dad people in the entire world um and you know not everybody's pretty or attractive or charming you you know you are going out of your way to um to limit your options at all and so i'm curious as to whether or not rejecting um uh, the master means that, uh, and by the master, I'm using old fashioned terms. I'm saying a rejection of white supremacy, a rejection of white America and all that conveys, which includes diction and, and tone and educational priorities and, uh, learnings and definitely history, right? Like history has always been, the written by the um by the victors right history is written by the victors and i believe that this is a time in american history where people want their voice back and they want their history back and they want uh things to be rewritten in a in a more inclusive way and i can see how important that is i'm just afraid i'm just so afraid i want everybody to be able to speak beautiful English, not because, not because I want people to sound like me, um, but because I believe that I'm extremely judgmental when people don't speak properly. Um, that includes uh, people from the Appalachians uh, and people from rural areas, and you know, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm terrible. I don't like anybody who spells badly. I don't like anybody who uses you for Y-O-U. I don't like emojis. And, you know, I'm a hiring person. And I know that um, that you can be any color. You can be an AI. But if you are an AI or any gender or any version of gender, he, him, she, her, they, uh, anything... Even an AI, I would expect my AI to have beautiful diction and amazing, like at least be as smart as Siri or at least be as smart. Alexa, are you smart? I try my best. Alexa, do you know any grammar? English grammar is the way in which meanings are encoded into wordings in the English language. Alexa, that was very well said. Sorry, I don't know that one. Hey, Google, do you know grammar? Sorry, I don't know grammar how Grammar is with usually that. defined Here as the grandmother, try. the mother of one's father or mother. 
she heard grand-mère. Grand-mère. Um, okay, well, I'm at the end of my rant. I don't know how this is going to uh, come out, but it makes a lot of sense. It's the evolution. It's an empowerment. If, um, if moms on buses in D.C. are calling uh, Howley's white devils, and if people around the country who are not white are calling smart kids in their schools bananas, Oreos, and coconuts, it only goes to tell me that it's not anti-intellectualism, which is something I believed, it's anti-culturalism, which I wasn't aware of. So, because it's been uh, 32 plus years that this has been evolving uh, since I experienced it in uh, uh, 34, 35, 36, 37 years ago, um, the strength of the, uh, of the voices has increased. Um, the empowerment of, of black and, and people of color's voices has become louder and more representative, represented, represented. And, um, and also the force fighting that has increased in tenacity, uh, and, over the course of the last three and three quarters years, the audacity, the the um, bombacity of the voices of the right and the voices of the dominant white culture, the dominant American Howley culture, uh, the seventy three plus percent. Uh, has become emboldened by Trump and has become more aggressive to fight that. So we're in the middle of that conflict. It wasn't until today that I understood that this was, in many ways, a taking back of cultural autonomy for any number of verticals. And by verticals, I mean Latinx or... You know, not just Latinx, Mexican, Dominican, Mayan, um, uh, Cuba, Cubanos, um, uh, Salvadorian, uh, El Salvador, from people from Sal El Salvador, Nicaraguan, um, Brazilian, Argentinian, uh, Venezuelan, it's you, you, Uruguayan. Uh, Peruvian, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, everybody in this country wants to have autonomy and self, self um, uh, reliance and, uh, and the ability. To, and oh my goodness, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Filipino, um, even in this, even in this, uh, um, in this building, uh, there are Mongolian people everywhere in this building. Uh, their autonomy, uh, their self-preservation, their languages, um, their representation. They're not being just called uh, whatever. Um Mongolia is different than China, is different than Malaysia, is different than Korea, is different than uh, Singapore, is different than Indonesia, is, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, American descendants of slavery are different than Ethiopians and around the world. Uh, I get it, but doesn't that, what does that say for the um, what what does that say for the future of america i i don't think that it can result in e pluribus unum i do not believe that that kind of balkanization hey google what's the definition of balkanization
Here's the definition of vulcanize, divide, a region or body into smaller mutually hostile states or groups. Alexa, please define vulcanize. Vulcanized is a form of the verb vulcanize, which is usually defined as to treat rubber with sulfur and Alexa, thereby... balkanized. What does balkanized mean? Sorry, I don't know that. Alexa, what does the word balkanized mean? Balkanized is a form of the verb balkanize, which is Alexa, no, no. no. Bal what does the word balkanized with a B mean? Hmm, I don't know that. Alexa, what does B-A-L-K-A-N-I-Z-E-D mean? Balkanized is a form of the verb balkanize, which is usually defined as to divide a country, territory, etc. into small, quarrelsome, ineffectual states. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for balkanize. Give me more definitions for balkanized. I have one more definition for the verb, balkanize, to subject a substance other than rubber to some analogous process as to harden it. That's vulcanized. But... I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. <laughs> so, um, more after this message. It's been forever. Oh, thank you. Welcome back. I don't know. I don't know what any of that means. I hope you guys reach out to me, tweet me, Facebook me, help me try to understand what the heck I just said for 40 minutes. Um, you can reach me at Chris Abraham on Twitter, at Chris Abraham on Instagram, Chris at Abraham.su. Uh, you can find me at ChrisAbraham.com. My podcast, Ground Zero, is anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. Um, I am, uh, at Chris on no agenda social. I am youtube.com slash Chris Abraham, facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. You can text me at plus one, two Oh two, three, five, two, five, zero, five, one. That's also my WhatsApp, uh, number. You can, uh, support me at anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham slash support. You can, you can leave your hat on. La 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 la